Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to your first look at the iPhone 11 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So the Roman numerals are gone and these are Apple's new flagship iPhones. So there's already a video up on the iPhone 11, the much less expensive iPhone for the masses that I think most people will be buying. That'll be the first link below the like button. I go over all the new features and the more basics and things like that. These new phones are $999 and 1099 to start and they go up from there so they're very expensive and they also put pro in the name which i have mixed feelings about i get it but i have mixed feelings about it okay so what is new well you can clearly see the design is already nearly identical to the 10s and 10s max same sizes so there are really four main things you need to know here display battery cameras and the matte finish Actually start with the matte finish since it's the most obvious. Uh, the glass on the back of these pro iPhones is now this sort of frosted, I would say, a very slight texture uh, and a matte finish to it. And I absolutely love it. And then the camera square weirdly goes back to glossy. So it's like the opposite of the cheaper iPhone 11, which is a glossy phone with a matte camera square. Um, I just kind of wish the whole back of this phone was matte, but maybe that's just me. Uh, they don't have a matte black, but they do have a matte space gray, along with a midnight green, which is like this subtle dark green, almost military camo type of green. Uh, and then there's a silver, which looks very bright, and gold, which is the most familiar one. So yeah, matte dark gray, while it actually might scratch more easily, not sure yet, only time will tell. Uh, I gotta use the phone and put it through its paces, but matte dark gray, I think, first impression, Love that. Okay, so display. Now, if you told me there's gonna be a new iPhone Pro this year with a Pro display, I would just assume that you meant it was gonna have 120 hertz, high refresh rate, ProMotion display. It does not have that, but it is a bit of an improvement from the iPhone XS Max. So it's now even brighter, bringing a peak brightness up to a ridiculous 1200 nits and creating a two million to one contrast ratio, so awesome numbers. And it's the same resolution OLED, same sizes, same notch and everything, very familiar looking display, but it's now even more impressive for watching movies and editing photos and videos, that type of thing. It's a better screen. Uh, 3D Touch is also now gone, but I and I think many others weren't really using it much anyway, and it's replaced with long presses instead of pressure sensitive presses they're called haptic presses, and they do pretty much all the same things. Uh, they're calling this new display Super Retina Display XDR. So if you're into name dropping, you can call it that. I'm just gonna call it a brighter display. Then there's the battery. So uh, on stage, Apple claimed four hours more battery life than the iPhone XS, and on the, the 11 Pro Max, five hours more battery than the XS Max. That is a huge improvement. And this really isn't coming from a much physically larger battery from the previous phone. A lot of these improvements are coming from the improved efficiency of the A13 Bionic chip inside. So not only is it a much more powerful chip, like we said in the iPhone 11 video, but it is much more efficient too. And that's where your battery gains will come from. I mean, of course, I will have to test these claims and put it to use and see how good it really is, but I'm really happy about those claims of much better battery life. And speaking of power, it now comes with an 18 watt fast charger in the box. Finally, iPhone Pro, it took a while. It took a Pro phone to get that. Um, but if you want that fast charger in the box, the iPhone 11, the cheaper one, doesn't get that. And it is USB Type-C to Lightning. So yeah, it's a step in the right direction. So that's the matte finish, the display, and the battery, which brings us to the one thing that they spent by far the most time on, and that's the new cameras. So triple cameras on the back here for the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max. It joins the three camera club. So one normal camera, one 2X telephoto, and one 120 degree ultra wide. And you can switch between the three of them in the app with the, the buttons if you want, or with a slider that sort of gracefully moves between all three focal lengths. And they made a big deal about how they wanted to match the quality as well as possible between these three cameras, which I really hope is true. That sounds great. Uh, you can do 4K 60 FPS video from all three cameras, which is dope. And you can choose to do portrait mode from either the telephoto or the normal camera, which is awesome. I'm definitely gonna choose portrait mode from the standard primary camera way more often now that I'll have that choice. And yeah, we can just generally look forward to better images and better videos coming from computational photography, high dynamic range, 
and all sorts of image pipeline improvements that make this uh, quote pro level photo and video camera. And then there's a couple other little things I mentioned like in the last video, like better face ID and slightly improved water resistance and a little bit more shadow resistant glass. But aside from that, that's basically it for the iPhone 11 Pro. So when you hear that, you don't necessarily think, oh, there's a whole ton of things that all stacked and added up to make this worthy of a pro level name. But it really just feels like they added the pro name because that's what's hot right now. Maybe that's a maybe that's a rant for a whole nother video, but like all these other features they could have added that would have made me think it's fine to name it pro aren't there. Like there's no reverse wireless charging. There is no high refresh rate pro motion display. There is no USB type C that would have been kind of pro. There is no Apple Pencil support. There is no in-display fingerprint reader. There isn't even any like special little bits of software that are tossed into the Pro version to make it at least feel more Pro, kind of like they did with iPad OS on the iPad Pro. Like if you're not gonna do any of that, Apple, you know what would have at least felt a little more Pro on the Pro iPhone that you have a big camera focus on? Putting the camera settings in the camera app instead of keeping them buried separately in the settings app. Little things like that, possibly the most basic thing they could have done really here to show that they're thinking about pros that take all kinds of photos and videos, um, but that's not here either. So it's not like a, it's not a bad phone at all. Honestly, this is probably going to be one of the best performing phones of the whole year. Might have some of the best battery life of any phone this year. And on top of that, it'll probably have one of the best displays. And I just freaking love that matte finish. But I guess it's just my expectation of the word pro that makes me feel like I should expect a bit more on top of that. But I guess that's just me. That's just the way I feel. Bottom line here is this. To sell you this phone, Apple is banking on you wanting to take the best photos or videos of any phone. They want this to be the best camera in any smartphone. It's clear from the presentation and any ad you watch. And if you take a lot of videos, I think it will be. Now for photos, that's debatable. You know, the Pixel 4 is right around the corner. Huawei's new flagship is about to come out, so that's a tougher sell. But this, this Pro iPhone upgrade is all about these cameras. And as a camera nerd, I do love that, even if it looks like a kitchen stove on the corner of your phone. Either way, let me know what you think. Also, definitely check out that iPhone 11 overview video for a feature overview and to see all those sweet colors. But that's been your first look at the iPhone 11 Pro. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.